I am Jenna Bosonko and this is QTV News coming to you live from our studios on Kariba Avenue. Thanks for joining us. And here are the main local business, sports and international news headlines. At the fifth annual stake in the nation forum, the deputy governor of the Central Bank of the Gambia has revealed that the Gambia registered a whopping 62.9% in remittances amounting to 774.6 million US dollars in 2021. A popular Gambian makeup artist, hairdresser and TikToker, Fatu Jaune, drawing on lessons from her incredible life experience, has warned Gambian youths to avoid using the so-called backway. In business news, we visit Tenje Fish Landing Site to find out from vendors and consumers about the reported shortage of fish and the high prices for them in recent months. In sports news, the Gambia women's volleyball team have intensified their training ahead of the Zone 2 championship they will be hosting in less than two weeks' time. And in international news, we look at what has been described as the epidemic of political dynasties on the African continent, which allows political elites to turn public office into family business. Those were the main headlines and now the news in detail. Do stay with us. Welcome back and you're watching QTV News and I am Jenna Bosonko. At the fifth annual stake in the Nation Forum, the Deputy Governor of Central Bank of the Gambia has revealed that the Gambia has registered a whopping 62.9% in remittances amounting to 771, 774.6% that is million dollars, obviously, in 2021. Now, President Barrow, in a statement delivered on behalf, by, on behalf of him by the Higher Education Minister, commends the Gambians in the diaspora for their contribution to national development. More in support. Held under the theme Consolidating and Accelerating National Development, this annual event brings together Gambians in the diaspora, government agencies, parliamentarians, religious and youth leaders, and experts in various fields, for meaningful dialogue and networking. Participants explore investment opportunities and try to provide solutions to challenges confronted by Gambians abroad. In a statement delivered by the Minister for Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology, Badara Juf, President Barrow highlights the importance of diaspora Gambians to the successful implementation of development projects aimed at transforming the lives and livelihood of Gambians. The theme is, ladies and gentlemen, as individuals, organizations, and businesses. The diaspora are a truly important partner in the noble task of consolidating and accelerating national development. As the figures of the Central Bank of the Gambia show, the trend is that remittances inflow to the country will reach one billion mark in the very near future. Dr. Sekou Jabi, Deputy Governor, Central Bank of the Gambia, Dr. A. Jalo, Attorney General and Minister of Justice, and Mamburi Njai, Minister of Finance, all highlighted the significant improvements registered in remittance volumes in 2021, which rose from 47% in 2020 to 62.9% in 2021, amounting to $40.65 billion. They also reiterated government's commitment to working closely with the diaspora to exploit new opportunities and address challenges to national development. The Central Bank is working with uh, other partners to disaggregate this uh, volume into use of uh, remittances, building and construction, consumption, education, health, agriculture, among others, to inform policy on the use of remittances. Your leadership is hereby invited to contact my office as soon as they can to start work immediately in finding solutions to some of these hurdles. As part of efforts to streamline diaspora bonds in our financing strategies, the debt management of, and the directorate of the Ministry of Finance has prepared a medium-term debt management strategy that is 20, from 2022 to 2026 that incorporates issuing a diaspora bond for infrastructure financing. Guest speakers, Professors Jibril Fall, Director of GK Partners and Amin Rasilla of Towson University in the U.S., spoke on the importance of the forum and the need to use the expertise of diaspora Gambians in policy formulation and implementation. Take this opportunity to congratulate the great people of the Gambia for, 
for participating in the Festival of Democracy. When there is a greater need at home, Gambians send home significantly more remittances to help their families. The flow of capital from diaspora should be seen as the most tangible element of the nexus between migration and development. Saturday's event also featured discussions on Gambian diaspora strategy, demand-led matching and deployment of diaspora professionals, culture, identity, development and diaspora engagement. Ansumana Esonyasi for KTV News. Ansumana Esonyasi there on the fifth annual Take of the Nation Forum. Now, many young girls tend to take up relatively early in their lives the daunting responsibility of caring for their younger siblings. Fatu Jaune, a popular Gambian makeup artist, hairdresser and TikToker based in Italy, shares her incredible life journey with QTV about her struggles and determination to, success, to succeed in life. More in this report by Ajibin Trudami. In life, the decisions we take determine our future. Fatu is her parents' first child. She says she struggled a lot to help her mother to cater for her siblings after her father died at an early age. This, she said, forced her to take the irregular bagway journey to Europe. She explains. All those hours, like I said, at age of 12, I started doing business. Selling like, I'm I started doing petty trading, know. like selling ice blocks and, and hairdressing uh, at the age of 12. My mother was not in support of it, but I loved it. Later, I, I started going to the Serokunda market to sell vegetables imported from Casamas to the women selling the there. The money I earned from, from the board. sales was what we used anyway, to cook the meal for that reality. day. After making a risky journey through the so-called back way to Italy, Fatu settled, married and now has a family. In 2020, during the height of the pandemic, she started using TikTok to entertain people. It was very tough with me. At my age, I was age of, let's say, 21 going to 22. The last day that I should take, let's say, the boat to go to Italy, it was a day that I will never forget. Because when I saw the boat and when I was imagining it, it was not the same. And I think about my mom, I think about my sisters. I was like, wow, what, what, what have I done? Why, why should I do all this? And that part was so difficult to me. Begging them is not the best way to take. Wherever you are, try to be strong, try to hustle. I start from a long, 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 long distance. I do a lot before taking the bag away. And if you may ask me whether I will do it again, I will never try it in my life. And I think I will do everything to stop the young people to take the way. Because it's not the best way to make it. With much encouragement and support from fans, Fatu is the first Gambian TikToker to hit a million followers. When I was starting the TikTok, it was all jokes, doing comedy because... The pandemic was so stressed to everyone. So after all the challenges, my new one told us TikTok be, and I stopped all the comedy. I come with a beauty that everybody know far to, and then boom, When I came, I came with 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 a full force, and I said this time around, it's another far to. It's like I'm born again, and no one can stop me. Start loving my videos, sharing it, playing it in the TV. I was like, wow. Like, people appreciate this, that I start creating more beauty, more stuff, more makeups. Fatu urges and encourages Gambians, especially youth, not to take the irregular migration routes to seek for greener pastures. Based on her personal experience and despite being successful, she says no journey is worth for one to lose one's life. TikTok is a video-focused social networking service which hosts short-form videos, including pranks, stunts, tricks, jokes, dance and entertainment, with the video lasting from 15 seconds to 3 minutes. Ajibintu Drame, QTV News. Incredible journey there, featured by Ajibin Trudrame. Now, China green tea, locally known as Ataya or Warga, is a popular brew in the West African sub-region. In the Gambia, it is loved and used by both males and females, young and old. Fatu C. Sanyang went out to gauge the opinion of the public on um, its possible health implications. Here is her report. 
Drinking attire is a favorite pastime for many Gambians. This bittersweet brew is not just an ordinary tea, but brings people together. Each brewing yields three pots of tea, which is usually drunk from small glasses as a hot, fruity liquid. The first round is the most potent, still retaining the bitterness, and the third, the sweetest and the weakest, with the second falling somewhere in between. The drink is frequently served as part of social activities after meals and is the beverage that is typically offered to friends and visitors. Usman Sanyang says he drinks attire daily, sometimes up to four times a day, and explains why. Attire is good because if you drink it, you won't smoke cigarettes or take other drugs. I don't have time for cigarettes and other stuff. I only brew attire and drink it. I just cannot stop drinking attire any time I see it. Aida Loba, another attire lover, explains how attire has been misused and gave some advice. The way I see boys drinking attire is not acceptable because they usually cook the sugar along with the attire, and that can make them ill. The first brew should be thrown away, and the second brew is the one people should drink. Drinking attire can promote socializing, stimulate conversation, and maintain friendship, because it takes a long time to prepare properly, giving those waiting the time to converse and exchange views. Aside from addiction that causes headaches as a withdrawal symptom, it is sometimes perceived as a symbol of idleness. Boy Diba appears to suggest so. Wala nan te den te wala je. Wala nan ninga min tilo shinya killing. Nta min na kwa dake. People should reduce the attire intake. If I drink it once a day, that's enough until the next day. However, when I have work to do, I don't drink attire. I don't sit down for the whole day. Those who do have time on their hands. If you don't have time, you won't sit and drink it throughout the day. According to research, green tea is full of health promoting compounds that help you lose weight and reduce the risk of several diseases. However, it is important to note that more evidence is needed before scientists can definitely prove these possible health benefits. Modun Jai, the director of health promotions at the Ministry of Health, talks about the health implications associated with attire. These can have implications on you in the long run. And I think uh, also increasing, we're also talking about how do we fight um, uh, NCDs, non-communicable disease in the country, specifically diabetes. Brewing attire involves adding sugar. If not controlled, the extra insulin in your bloodstream can affect your arteries. This can affect your heart and cause damage over time, which can lead to heart disease like heart failure, heart attacks and strokes. A word of caution to attire drinkers seems to be, drink responsibly. For QTV News, I am Fatusi Sanyang. Interesting. From that story by Fatusi Sanyang, we will now go for a short commercial break. And when we come back, we have some more stories for you. Do stay tuned. In your SUV life, S Pass Motors, the new authorized dealer for Kia. Visit us today or call us on Welcome back from that short break. If you're just tuning in, you're watching QTV News, and I am Jenna Bosonko. Now, on to business news. Welcome back, and sorry for that brief, brief inter introduction. 
interruption rather. Now fish is consumed in many households in the Gambia, but fish vendors and consumers have been complaining about its shortage and the high prices for them in recent months. Our reporter Omar Pijalo visited the Tanje fish landing site to find out why fish is so expensive. It looks like business as usual at Tanje Market. However, what has brought most people here is becoming a challenge to purchase, as fish is becoming more and more expensive in the country. Fishermen blame the high prices of fish on the high cost of fuel and a significant decline in delicacies. My Sanjay, a fisherman, said, For even a moderate catch, fishermen need to travel far into the sea, meaning using more fuel. <laughs> Fuel is expensive. Imagine using 20 to 40 liters of fuel to go to sea. You must sell at high price to make a profit. Also, the Gambia has three Chinese-owned fish mills and oil factories located in Sanyang, Katong and Gunju. This causes overfishing and illegal fishing. Thus, the reason for the scarcity of fish. Fatma Tajabi, a fish vendor, said, they are buying fish at high prices from the fishermen. Therefore, they have to sell at high prices to make profits. A basket of ponga fish and tilapia now cost between $800 to $1,000. Most ordinary people cannot afford it. Our youth should venture into fishing. Almost all fishermen here are foreigners. That is why the prices are high. Fatou Kamara came to buy fish. This is what she has to say about the prices. Uh, I bought some $200 and some $100. It is somehow expensive today because, uh, as you can see, they were complaining of that they don't catch so many fishes. So the cost is so high, at, as you can see. The meat is expensive since so many of us rely on fish, and that is what I can afford as for now. As essential as fish is to a healthy diet, the current situation is making this staple unaffordable for many Gambians. Reporting for KTV News, I am Omar P. Jallo. From that story by Omar P. Jallo, now let's take a look at what is happening in the world of sports. Now, the Gambia women's volleyball team have intensified their training ahead of the Zone 2 Championship they will be hosting from the 13th to the 17th January 2022. Eight countries are expected to take part in the sub-regional competition. Our sports reporter, Momodo Gajaga, visited their training ground at the Independent Stadium Volleyball Court on Friday, and this is his report. Training intensely on both physical and tactics of the game ahead of the Zone 2 tournament, which kicks off in nine days' time. These girls will form the team that will represent the Gambia in the eight-nation competition, which includes Senegal, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Mali, Sierra Leone and Cape Verde. The players look to be in upbeat mood ahead of the competition. Um, well, as you can see, looking at this match that we've played, you can see that um, we are playing really good. The fitness is there, the commitment is there, the dedication is there. So you would tell that definitely we have a team in the Gambia. But then looking at this, this is a four years project and we are not going or looking for the trophy. We are looking at the performance. In the next two years, that is when we are preparing to get the trophy. So as you can see, we are young. It's a dream project. It's a project that we are building. So we are definitely training hard to ensure that um, we bring the name of our nation up and to make sure that we perform well so that people can see our capabilities and what we can do. A four-year project was launched late last year to prepare the women's team that will be good enough to compete at the international stage. After their training camp in Dubai in November last year, the players will have their first real test in this competition. Coach of the team, Lamin Elef Baji, says the training is going on well and they want to do well in the competition. The training uh, is going very good. Honestly, the training is very good because the, the players are committed. You know, everybody is willing, everybody is determined. You know, that team spirit is in place. So that makes me very much comfortable with the team. The game is all about flexibility. Uh, there is no permanent uh, situation in the game. These are some of the things that you can use to overcome the opponents. Like if you always be playing open, open game, it makes very easy for the opponents to read and then try to control your way of play. But if you start to apply certain movements, surprisingly, you know, you overcome the opponent. This is a warm-up game, but winning here 
against a selection of both experienced and amateur players will give the team confidence going into the tournament. Mumudu Gajaga, QTV News. Now from that story by Mumudu Gajaga, let's take a look at stories beyond our borders. Now, analysts have observed what they describe as an epidemic of political dynasties on their African continent that they say threatens peace and security and allows power concentration on the political elite. Mumudu Lamin Choi has the rest of that. Published by the online journal The Conversation, analyzes the backgrounds of 1,029 presidents and prime ministers who held office between 2000 and 2017 and found that on average, one in ten world leaders had family ties to politics. It also states that Europe and Latin America had the highest percentage, but sub Saharan African leaders were more likely to have relatives who held top office. This research finding, in essence, is a pointer to what analysts describe as an epidemic of political dynasties around the world, which is fueling crisis and detrimental to Africa. Africa is known for some of its leaders whose appetite for power grew rapidly as days to their tenure are numbered. This happens with presidents or prime ministers grooming and later handing over power to their offspring, either directly or indirectly. It is easy to find African leaders who currently benefit from what analysts describe as a result of a political dynasty. Recently, nine presidents on the continent had father and son, brother or uncle as former head of state in Botswana, Kenya, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Gabon, Togo, Mauritius, Malawi, Ghana and Equatorial Guinea. Political dynasties are not unique to Africa. Both former U.S. President George W. Bush and current Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau are sons of their country's former heads of state. Father-son presidential successions tend to be rooted in patriarchal authoritarian politics in which one man holds too much power for too long. The risk attached to such a practice can breed disaster, with political analysts attribute to have exacerbated personal politics, weakened key institutions, for a delegitimized government and fuel conflict and instability on the continent. A public resistance to political dynasty in Senegal witnessed former President Abdullah Wad facing violent protests due to suspicions that he was grooming his son Karim Wad, who held several ministries simultaneously during his father's presidency, to be his successor. Political dynasties don't seem to be on the wane in Africa. In Uganda, President Museveni who has been in power for 36 years, appears to be grooming his son to assume power after appointing him as a major general and a senior presidential advisor for special operations. In recent months, the younger Museveni seems to have made himself an unofficial presidential spokesman by responding to criticism of his father. Former Zimbabwean president Robert Mugabe tried the same formula for his wife but failed and was kicked out of power by the military. And Equatorial Guinea's presidential Obiang is closer to succeeding by having his son as his vice president. Tom Collins, a political analyst writing in New African magazine in 2018, sums it up thus. Never before have ruling dynasties been of more importance as a focus of political analysis around the world than today. As democratic institutions extend themselves from one generation to the next, paradoxically, so too do those privy to the bosom of power and the running of a country. Mohamed Lamin Choi, QTV News. Unfortunate. Now before we end this news bulletin, let's recap our main headlines. At the fifth annual stake in the nation forum, the deputy governor of the Central Bank of the Gambia revealed that the Gambia registered a whopping 62.9% in remittances amounting to 774.6 million US dollars in 2021. A popular Gambian makeup artist, hairdresser and TikToker Fatou Jaune, drawing on lessons from her incredible life experience, warned Gambian youths to avoid using the so-called backway. In business news, we visited Tenje Fish Landing Site to find out from vendors and consumers about the reported shortage of food and the high prices for them in recent months. 
In sports news, the Gambia women's volleyball team have intensified their training ahead of the Zone 2 championship they'll be hosting in less than two weeks' time. And in international news, we looked at the so-called epidemic of political dynasties on the African continent, which allows political elites to turn public office into a family business. Well, that is all we have for you in this edition of QTV News. Do join us tomorrow for the week in review. Bye for now.